All right, cool. Is everything good? Um, so for now, I just want to start off with this like, very simple PowerPoint of who I am, what I do, et cetera, et cetera. And today will be ASME and SolidWorks Workshop 2, Parts and Assemblies. About me, my name is Yovan Lukic. I am currently the Secretary of ASME. I'm part of the mechanical sub team, and I've been working with um, SolidWorks and I had CAD experience for about three years. Um, what we'll be doing today is we'll be going, we'll be basically reviewing parts, basically like revolves, extrude balls, fills, chamfers, and cuts. We'll be going over planes. We'll be going over a whole wizard, advanced tool, and threading. The three new things I'm planning on going over parts isn't that important. They're more of like an honorable mention, but like a lot of the, um, I should say the fundamentals of SOLIDWORKS and CADDING was kind of reviewed over the last SOLIDWORKS session. So if you want that session is posted up on your art, up on our YouTube page. And for assembly, we'll be doing assembly today. We'll be basically inserting components, mating, move, rotate, plane, uh, mirror component, and explode view. All of which are basically the fundamentals of assembly. With that being said, let's begin. Um, all right, um, open up your guys' um, SOLIDWORKS. All right, this is, yeah, basically we'll be making this chain if you want to, We'll be, be basically making this chain. All right. Um, so open up SolidWorks, follow you, open up parts. Yo, Yovan, are you recording? Right now? Yeah, I'm recording. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, open up, open up SolidWorks, open up parts, and pick a plane. I say for this one, choose the front plane. It isn't very important for what we're doing. Right now, the first thing I'm going to go over when it comes to parts is threading. And by threading, I'm like threading on a bolt. You'll see what I mean. So with that being said, we'll be sketching like a simple bolt model. Uh, start off your line from the origin point. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. Um, but yeah, right now just draw the general outline. Cool. Well, I apologize. Let me open up, how do I open up comments, the comment section? Yeah, I can't see your guys' comments, to be honest. Uh, Richard, do you mind helping me out? Whatever, I can't. So I guess if you have a question, just unmute your mic and just ask me. Oops. But yeah, for now, um, like I said, draw this general bowl shape and we're going to dimension it accordingly. Make this a quarter of an inch. So 0.25. Smart dimension this. Um, tenth of an inch. Oops. 0 0.10. Smart dimension this. One inch. Like I said, the dimensions don't necessarily matter. I'm just putting anything like arbitrary, like just arbitrary values. And then, whoops, sorry. What's, um, it's not fully defined, so now I'm just checking where it's fully defined. Oh, it's right here. The thick, uh, the thickness of this part right here. So make this a 10th of an inch, I guess. Cool. Now it's fully defined. We define it using dimensions and we add a relation in respect to the origin. We made it coincident. And now to revolve it, we just go to feature, revolve base, and it'll be revolved around this axis right here. There you go. Now we have a general bowl shape. Then press the uh, green check mark. Cool. You guys have this? Should I slow down? I like to say I can't see the comments right now. So if you if you have any questions, just on you, your mic and go ahead and ask. If you guys don't mind. But if not, then for now I'm going to proceed. So yeah, right now I'll be doing threading. This is a part that is new. This whole thing was kind of like a review type thing. But yeah, right now I'll be going over threading. In order to go to threading, we have to go to whole wizard. If you click on the little check mark right here or the little down arrow, 
there are three sections: full wizard, advanced tools, and thread. We'll be going all we'll be going over all three, but for now, let's start off on thread. Okay, so click on thread. Whoops. And this message right here essentially basically says that um, the threading isn't accurate. You could go ahead and read your results, but saying it won't be accurate just in respect to quality production. Just press OK on that. Um, so in order to thread up along this bolt, just click on the edge. Oops, there you go. And let me explain the threading a little bit. Since um, right now it's set to inch tap, um, here are the sizes. There are many industry sizes, I mean, many of the standardized sizes. So if you have a particular size and um, thread per inch, you go ahead and do that. Um, there is blind, and this is, so this is how um, far deep into the bolt you kind of want it. You can make it one inch, which I'm going to do because why not? Whoops, actually, nine tenths of an inch. So now the threading up all the way, if I want it to be a little bit shorter, I can. Sorry, it's kind of lagging. And if not, then whatever. So right now I'm just gonna have a nine tenths of an inch. Perfect. And that's threading, it's pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, you could change it to inch tap, but since we're working with the bolt, right now I'll keep it on inch tap. You can even put it on metric tap, so that'll be in millimeters. Here are, are all the standard sizes. And if you want custom pitch and angles, It'll be all right here, but for now I'm just working with standardized sizes. Um, and if you want to extrude it, like forward and backwards along the bolt, go ahead and mess around with this. But this is and this is um, so far just threading. Now click the check mark. Oops. Unable to cut cylinder. Sorry. Let's make it tense. I apologize. Is it because it's supposed to be in die? Oh, that's right. Sorry. So we're we're working with bolts. So like it's supposed to be an inch die, not tap. Tapping is if you're threading a borehole. But yeah, um, once you thread, once you thread the uh, die, um, you'll get a thread. You'll be you'll be getting a thread geometry, and you'll be getting something like this, and that's it. Any questions? Uh, no, so far. No? All right, cool. Now we'll be doing threading in respect to a borehole. So right now, if you want to save this, I'll give you time to save this. Me personally, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to save. All right, cool. Um, so to delete, if you did not already, right click on whatever you want to delete and just press delete. Yes, I'll be deleting all this to be honest. And sketch, whatever, I can leave the sketch. Or I'll delete the sketch too. Cool, new sketch. Make a plane, uh, it's just a tall plane. I'll be working with the top plane. You can choose any plane you want. Right now, it's not important what plane you choose, but like when you come in, when you get into um, making like a CAD drawing, like a technical drawing, then it's, then it's kind of important to follow the planes in which you want. But for now, it's not very important. But when we get to workshop number three, you'll see why that's important. But for now, make a rectangle. Um, size it up to any size, really that part doesn't matter. I'll just make it three inches by three inches just for the heck of it. Three inch. So now you have your rectangle, it's bounded to the origin point. Um, now we're going to extrude it. So go to features and extrude boss and base. Again, to me, it's not very important. I'll make it one inch, whatever. The point isn't to make this plate, the point is to make what we're doing next. And what we're doing next are three things. We'll be going over planes, we'll be going over hole wizard and advanced holes. Uh, let's see where I wanna start off. I wanna start off with advanced holes and hole wizard. So 
make on the top view or whatever view plane you kind of start off with. And we'll be doing a sketch, so, so not sketch, but we'll be selecting it and go to a whole wizard. So there are two things, whole wizard and advanced holes. Essentially, whole wizard and advanced holes are basically what extrude cut is. The only difference is this is in respect to machine. So whole wizard will be in respects to, I believe, um, Apple here, let's just check it out, sorry. Hole wizard will be in respects to, oh, that's right, the whole type. So if you're boring a hole in it, like let's say with a machine or with a no machine, there are different hole types in that respect. So it's in, so it'll be in respects to whole type. Um, so there are different types of holes, counter bore, counter sink, hole. For now, I'm just going to do counter bore because why not? Oh, whoops. Then you press select. Here it says. So right now it just plays the counter board randomly. You can see like little point here. And I'm sorry, I'm not too much into machining, but essentially this is it. Um, but if you want to, if you want to um, like put this on a particular spot, if you want to like bind it to like particular dimensions, just right click on it and then edit features. Sorry. Yeah, so edit features and go to position. And now with position, you could edit it where you want the hole to be. Oops. It, this is here, just press escape. If I want, I could bind it to the origin point. And, whoops, can I? Sorry, I kind of messed up. I think I deselected something. Position. So if I want to combine it to the origin point and make it coincident. There, now I have a, now I have a bore in a, at the origin position. Um, go back to edit feature. Also, if I want, I could control how deep this is. Right now it's half an inch. And to control how deep it is, um, you just do this right here where it says bind and just change it to like, let's say one inch if you want. Oops, that's fine. So now this is one inch. If I want, I can do through all, I can do next to, up to vertex, up to surface, and offset from surface. Similar to the regular standard um, extrude cut um, relations. But for now, I'm just doing blind to one inch, sure. I'm gonna put a three fourths of an inch just so I can, just so you can see how it looks like. This is to um, this is to edit the counter sink, and this is to edit the angle of the counter sink. I'm not gonna mess around with that too much, but for now, um, this should suffice. And if I want threading in the inside, what I could do is just go down here, go to thread. Again, this is telling me that won't be up to size, and then click on the edge. And then thread, um, this is inch tie. I think I want inch tap. Again, you could do inch tap, you could do metric tap, which will, which will be in the metric system, doesn't matter. Um, sorry, this is to control how deep it is. The, whoops, sorry, it's lagging. So yeah, if I want, it could be like one inch all the way through. But yeah, this is threading. Again, if I'm going too fast, if you have any questions, just let me know. But so far, this is um, advanced, or this is whole wizard. And now we'll be going over one more hole type before we get into planes. So advanced holes. Again, something similar. The only difference between advanced holes and whole wizard was, whole, like I said, whole wizard was in respect to the cut type. So whatever like drill bit you're using, this is in respect to bolt types or whatever bolt you're using. So there's um, binding head screw, um, heavy hex bolt, hex bolt, doesn't matter, binding head screw. Here are the sizes, all the standard die sizes. Uh, sure, one. And then you press check mark. Oops. Oh, sorry, I forgot to click on the other side. So yeah, so so yeah, I clicked on the face, now now the holes on the face. Now you can position it. Last time I position it's very similar to um hole wizard. Last time I positioned it to the origin point, 
But right now I'm going to position it to whatever dimension. So last time it was in respect to relation, I'm going to do in respect to dimension. So click where you want that to be, select that or deselect it, then smart dimension. From here to here, let's just say. And then here to here. Sure. And right now it's 0.81 inches and 0.81 inches from the two edges. If I want to edit that, whoops, yeah, I can just click on it and it'll edit it to whatever value value you want. But for now, this is it. Um, am I still in here? Whoops. Oh, that's where I'm still in from. And then if I want to, like I said, change how deep it is. Oops. I don't know what I did. Oh, I have you have bolt. Or finally that. I'll deal with that later. Um, but if you want to control how deep it is, where it is bind, or let's say click on bind, which is down here, they can control through here, let's say half an inch. Cool. And now you'll have a hole and it'll be in respect to the bolt type that you're using. So like I said before, uh, hole wizard is in respect to the type of hole you'll be drilling with, meaning like what drill bit you'll be using. And this will be in, then advanced holes will be in respect to what bolts you'll be using. And this is um, hole wizard and advanced holes. Normally, like I said, like I use um, just like standard old, what's called a screwed cut. Honestly, that does the job pretty well. But if you want to go in respect to machining, here you go. You could say that it's not it's not really important. This is just more so to get the idea uh, done. Um, the next thing I'll be going over right now are planes. So last workshop we kind of already went over planes a little bit, but let me just get into it like a little bit more um, specifically. So to get to planes, I just go to um, features, reference geometry, down arrow, and then planes will be at the top. So click on planes. The two relations I'll give you the planes in is in respect to distance and in respect to angles. So to define the plane, I have to define it to a particular um, piece. And in this case, it'll be this block or the face of the block. So click on that. Right now, the plane is parallel to the block. If I want, I could change the distance of it. I could offset it. And as far as I could tell, that's as much as I could do. Can I, what does this, oh yeah, and I can do multiple planes at once. So now we have two planes. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at one. So there's that. So right now that's in respect to like just distance from the uh, face of the part. Right now I'm gonna do an angles. So if I wanna like make out a certain angle, I have to select the second reference. And in this case, it'll be the edge. Oops, Here, let me start all over again with the plane. So reference geometry, plane, face, edge. So right now, right now the plane is bounded to the edge of the uh, piece. And if I want to change the angle, so click on this little angle thing, and then I could um, change the angle I want. If I want to flip the offset, click offset flip, and it'll flip it 59 degrees this way. All right, cool. And this is important, let's say if I want to like extrude a hole, like going down at a certain angle, I just click on here, sketch. You don't have to do this part, by the way, this is just to um, show you guys. Let's see if I could extrude cut without defining extrude cut. Cool. And there, essentially what I did was I created a plane to make a circle so I could, so I could extrude a cut at an angle of this particular part. And that's all I did. All right, wait, with planes done, I believe this is all when it comes to parts. Like, so a lot of the fundamentals were taught last, um, the last workshop. So if you want, you can check it out on our YouTube page. But for now, this is it. With that being said, save this, delete this, do whatever you want with this particular part. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. 
and just go on assembly. So what I'm going to do right now is go to file new, click on assembly. Okay. And for those who are here, were you guys able to download the um, the four files I sent you guys on Discord? And if not, that's fine. But for now, just like I said, we'll be making this chain assembly. Whoops. So yeah, we'll be making this chain assembly. So like I said, file a new assembly. And then the first thing you wanna do is insert your part. So go to insert components, browse for the file that you want. For me, it's right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to start out with chain link one. Cool. Here's chain link one, here's the uh, part, you can rotate it. If you want to rotate it, just I usually hold down the scroll wheel and then like move my mouse around. That's normally how I can like pan. So this is how you pan around the part. Um, right now you're at you're at move component. You can move it any way you want. Whoops, it's fixed. And to unfix it, you just right click on it and then press float. And so now you can move the part any way you want. But for now, I'm just gonna right click it and fix it. Cool. Um, what else did I want to do? Oh, that's right, rotate. If you want to rotate the component, just like down click, press rotate. Then you can rotate any way you want. Whoops. I think we'll rotate because, hold up. I think I'll rotate. Float. Oh, there you go. So yeah, now you can rotate the part any way you want. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. Whoops. I want to rotate it back. Yeah, that's more or less correct. All right, cool. So now, right now, you have your um, you have the part that you need, or the first part that you need um. And now to commence with the chain link project, you want to insert a component. So now you want to insert the second um, chain link. So insert component, browse for the file, and the, the file that you'll be opening up will be chain link number two, or yeah, chain link two, where is it? So this is the file that you'll be opening up. All right. When you're when you're like mating something, mating is when you add um, relations to like one part to another, so it'll stick the way that you want. So if you're mating something, the important, the most important thing is when you uh, insert your component, make sure that the component is um, face the face the way it's faced the way that you want and it's face closest to how you're going to mate it. It'll make sense like a little bit later. So right now, just insert a component. Uh, check mark. See right now it's a little bit away, so what what you can do is move it. So move it forward, closer, move it up. If you guys need me to slow down, just let me know. But yeah, like I said, if you want to pan around, just hold down on your scroll wheel of your mouse and then just like pan around. It's pretty straightforward. All right, I'm going to make this thing two ways so I can show you guys um, two ways of mating. So when you mate, this is what I mean by mating. Mating is essentially adding one relation of a part to another relation, or sorry, you're adding relations from one part to another in order for it to um, stick the way that you want. That's the best I can describe it. In this case, I want the chain or this link to be connected to this link somehow. How I'm going to do that is by making a tangent, by making, sorry, by making this part tangent to this. Perfect. And then making this part, part tangent to that. I believe that's fine. Yeah, that's perfect. So the reason why I did that because I knew that this this um, part of the link will be tangent to this part of the link, meaning the holes will line up perfectly. So that's all I did. And press check mark. And now they're connected. They're one piece. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and ins insert uh, one more component, which will be the pins. Insert component. Browse. Chain link pen. Like I said, if you guys need me to slow down, just let me know. And now here's a pen. The pen is kind of in the inside of this whole model, so I'm going to move it out. I'm going to rotate. Perfect. And I'm going to mate it. And there are two ways I'm going to mate it. I'm going to mate, I want this um, bowl to be flush with this part of the, with this part, that's A. And I want the bowl to be lined up with the holes. So in order to make it line up with the holes, I just click the side or click this, yeah, click the side. And then click this side right here and make them cone centric. With it being cone centric, now I know that they're roughly in the middle of each other and they should line up pretty well. Second, like I said, I want this to be flushed with this part. So what I can do is click on this side and click on this, and it'll be coincident. Press the green check mark. Perfect. Now, as you can see, the pin is flush with this part and it went in pretty well. Then green check mark. Any questions, comments, concerns? No? All right, now you're gonna insert your second pin. So insert component, browse for file, quick access, then open up your chain link pin number two, which will be this one. Cool. I have one a little bit more on this side. That's fine. If I want, if I want to rotate it, green check mark. Then I'm going to make it very similarly how I did. Like I said, I want this edge to be lined up with this hole. Just like the just like last time, just click on this edge, or sorry, just click on this face and click on this face of this four. Make it concentric and then press the green check mark. And I want it flushed. Like right now, sorry. Can you move it? But right now the bowl can move, which is why I want to flush to the surface because right now you can move it. So click on that and click on this. Make sure they're coincident and press the green check mark. There you go. Now the uh, two pins are more or less um, mated. All right. One more thing I want to go over before to finish up this um to finish up the chain piece. Again, we could we could just do this over and over and over again, which is why I kind of like picked it because it's almost a repeating pattern. Um, you could go ahead and um, just click, like do what you did before, like add this piece again, do everything with the pins, make it however you want, that doesn't matter. But how I'm going to do it, um, you don't have to do this way. In some cases it may be difficult, but I mean, it also makes things, um, simpler here i'll show you what i mean and by that i mean i'm going to mirror the component so what i'm going to do right now is mirror like all this onto this side and this is how i'm going to do it so yeah right now the right plane is right here so what i'm going to do right now is um is create a plane so this i'm going to create a plane so click on this plane or whatever reference when you want, go to, sorry, my thing is kind of in the way. Go to assembly, then go to reference geometry, click plane. And right now I haven't really gone over this like personally. So right now I'm just going to offset the plane by about 0.95 inches. I mean, I, sorry, I don't know how it looked like roughly on your guys' end, but it should be about 0.95 inches. Um, 
just make sure that the plane is like in the middle of this particular part of the chain link. If that makes sense, because we'll be we'll be we'll be marrying the component in respect to the the center of this part. So now once you have the plane, just press the green check mark. And now we're going to mirror it. So in order to mirror, this is how you mirror. Press insert, mirror components, and now click on every, I mean, the plane's already selected. It's already so, selected the plane first. Um, so now click on every component you want to mirror. So now this component, that component, and that component. Then press the green check mark. Perfect. And now we just mirror the chain link. And we can do that over and over and over again. Oops. The only thing about marrying, sometimes the mates don't transfer over, so you're going to have to do, do that, but it still makes things easier, I believe. Oops, I want to be tangent. Yeah, it's still. Oh, whoops. So I guess what happened right now, when I married in respect to the plane, I married in respect to the wrong plane, but I didn't want to deal with this chain link in particular. It's more useful when you're dealing with more symmetrical parts in respect to like um, rectangular relations, but this isn't something that I figured out right now. So sorry about this, about the mess up right now, but right now this isn't that important. So I'm just going to control Z, control Z, and just make sure that it's, mirror that way like i said um normally when i use it i use it in respect to rectangular relations but with the chain i mean i haven't really looked into it so i kind of like i kind of like um just did it as i went on so with that being said here's a chain link and now what i'm going to do now is go over exploded view so what exploded view does essentially is um essentially takes your part and like basically separate each part the way that you want it'll be easier if i show it Every time you do an exploded view though, make sure that you're isometric to your part. And to make it isometric, you press the space bar and then you click on this corner little piece right here. Now it's isometric. Because normally when you do exploded view, more likely than not, you're going to do it in respect to an isometric point of view. So make it isometric. Then, sorry, click down on exploded view. Sorry, assembly exploded view. Then click on exploded view. Like I said, so what exploded view does essentially like um, explodes your part, if that makes sense. And to do that, you kind of click on your part. I'm going to start off with a pin. And then, then slide your pin whichever way you want. Right now, I can slide it on the Z axis, so like left and right, if I want. Whoops, then. Sorry for this mess up. So the axis, if I want, I could do it. Sorry, I'm trying to do it on the y-axis. Sorry, I want to add zero degrees. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to show you guys how to do them both like in two axes at once. So here's the axis. Done. Then you can do it again on the y-axis, but for now I'm just going to keep the y-axis at zero, and very similarly to the x-axis. Then you, then whenever you're done with your exploded view with that particular part, just press done. Cool. And then you're going to want to do with the next part. Let's say this chain link. Explode it this way and press done. This chain link too. This way and press done. And now again with this pin, slide it out and press done. And essentially what you're doing, the whole point of this is to show showcase each and each and every part. Now I can click on it, slide it upwards, and then press, press done. So right now all my parts are exploded. And then when you're done with this exploded part, 
press the OK button. So right now the um now right now my particular assembly is exploded. All my parts are the way it is. And to unexplode it or to collapse it, just go to this command tree or sorry, this configuration manager. Right click on default. Oh sorry. Sorry, not right click. I'm, I apologize. So click on this arrow next to default. Here's the exploded view. Right click on that and press collapse. Then you go, sorry, you go right click on it again, then press explode. Then we're going to collapse it again. So essentially, this is a exploded view. You could collapse it, you explode it. And to get back to where you want, to go back to your um, regular configuration or uh, feature manager, just go to feature manager and here's all your needs and whatnot. Um, all right, cool. Um, this is it. This is everything I want to talk about. I've talked about like some of the things on parts, some of the reviews, some of the planes and advanced holes and hole wizards. I went over all my mates and a photo view. With that being said, this is kind of my course as of right now. I mean, this is everything that I want to go over right now. There's a lot of extra time left. If you guys have any questions, you can go over the questions. If you want to like work on it on your guys on your own and ask me questions and have me tutor you guys, I could go ahead and do that for you guys. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns? No? Or? It was a good presentation, Yo, I liked it. Um, will right, you so. be doing like kind of like follow-up uh, content in terms of like making something a lot more difficult? Yes, so, yes, I would. Um, if I want, I could go over go over something a little bit more difficult in the next workshop. If not, then I could post up YouTube videos. I'll, I'm planning on posting up YouTube videos of like different examples. Yeah, I would say probably do like follow up material because I mean yeah. right now you just discussed the, the main course of it, but if you do kind of like follow up videos um, that don't need to be like live, I think people could just follow along with them. I think that'd be a little bit better. No problem. Yeah. So like I so said, I'll be I'll be coming out with YouTube videos like with a couple of examples and everything from mating to assembly to um, parts and whatnot modeling. So if you guys want to check out our YouTube page, it should be this link right here. That will probably be funny. Yeah. Oh, don't forget to post kind of like that that Google Forms you want about the feedback. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and if you guys don't mind, or right here, where's the feedback one? Here you go. And if you guys don't mind, follow this like feedback page, like basically, basically telling me what I could do better, what I could do. I mean, whether to go faster, slower, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it'll be helpful to you guys. It'll be helpful to me. So if you guys don't mind, go ahead and fill that out. Um, with that being said, the um, the uh, workshop is done. Like I said, if you guys want to stick around, if you guys need help, I'll help you guys. I'll be glad to help you guys out. If not, then we're good. Yeah. Um, Nixon, do you mind? Uh